Hello, this is the sixth video in a series I'm calling Transformations of Random Variables. And here we're going to look at the multivariate change of variable technique. And I always like to start out with a little picture of, ab, you know, abstractly uh, illustrate what's going on with the uh, change of variables. And here we have a random vector x in domain s. And we have a function h that maps uh, sets here to sets in uh, t, the, the t domain, which we maybe we call the y world. And it's a function h of the h, h of x. Um, and then um, we can also think of an inverse image. Uh, sometimes I call it pre-image. I don't know if that's common uh, nomenclature. Um, but a pre-image of a set in T are all the elements in X that are mapped to it. And that's called a pre-image. Now, if we put more restrictions onto it, say it's a one-to-one -one, uh, transformation, that says that one element here goes to one element here. And then we can map it back to that same element. It's a function, actually, inverse function, the uh, per, uh, inverse images. Anyway, let's jump right into the theorem. And if we, if we have like uh, the k-dimensional random variable have a continuous PDF f of x except for on possibly a finitely many number of x's. Okay. Um, let the transformation h of x equal to y. And then you can think of it as uh, k different components. Uh, we need that it's a measurable transformation. And I have a, a video series on probability measure if you want a little more detail on what measurable means but it means you know that sets in here and sets in here and they they behave and talk and communicate well that's my <laughs> quick version of measurable but it's also one-to-one -one is our transformation and that means that the inverse image exists <coughs> and it uniquely maps elements back and forth so um so since it's a one-to-one -one transformation of H, you know, H goes from S to T, and that means for every vector in T, uh, the vector H is this inverse uh, function, inverse image, and it exists. So, and then we assume all partial derivatives, uh, G I, G J I, which can be thought of uh, this, uh, exists and, con and is continuous on T. Then the PDF Y, of the vector y is given by this uh, formula here, where y is in t, and j, the Jacobian, is a function of the vector defined as this, where this is the derivative of these individual uh, partial derivatives. So let's jump in with an example, or a few notes first. So note that our transformation H goes from K dimensions to K dimensions. Um, but often the vector that we're interested in is less than K dimensions, say M. So one workaround is we choose another sort of simple K minus one transformations uh, on R, K to R. Um, and we add them in our transformation. These, the, we have K minus M components here that we're not really interested in. And so we set this vector Z to be our, our original Y transformation plus these K minus, uh, M minus K, um, I mean K minus M uh, more uh, transformations. So then we find the PDF of Z on this vector of this vector z then integrate out the last k minus m arguments of z and then the pdf of y remains the original so we integrate out these last and then our original y remains uh, let's do an example this is an example we did two videos ago using what i call the cdf technique where we have two random vectors x1 and x2 and they're uniform uh, on alpha to beta, and we want to find the PDF of Y, which is the sum of the two. Now, um, so the, the PDF of X1, X2 
since they're independent, it's just the individual product of their two densities, which is this. Uh, X1, X2 is between alpha and beta. So here, we, uh, X1 is, is the what we're interested in, what we want to find the PDF of. So we create another variable, uh, say Y2 equal to X2, just so we can go from R2 space to R2 space. Uh, then when we uh, back solve for X1 and X2, we get this, and we can find the Jacobian of this. Um, then what I like to do is map. So this is the original space, X1, X2, and, and it goes from alpha to beta and alpha to beta. And then what uh, we do is borders map to borders over here. So th if this is, I call it the first border, so X1 is always uh, uh, alpha and beta, X2 goes from alpha to beta, you can see that that's mapped to this boundary here. And then we do the same. So then this boundary, um, when we let X1 go from alpha to beta and X2 remains beta, so we can plug them into these this transformation and then find that that's mapped, this, this boundary is mapped to this boundary. And the third boundary is mapped to this boundary and the fourth to this boundary. And this is going to be important when we integrate out Y2 we have to think of what where we're integrating from, and so w here we're integrating, you know, from this boundary to this boundary, but then it changes it alpha plus beta. So then we integrate from these two boundaries, and so that becomes important when we integrate. And so um, this lower boundary is alpha, you know, when y two is alpha, but this one here is um, y1 minus alpha and then when we get to this region y2 is beta but then this one is y minus one y1 minus beta and so you have to know those regions so let's jump to uh, finding the uh, density so we find the joint density of y1 and y2 um, and we do that with our joint density of X1 and X2, and we enter, put in our inverse uh, image of the, our transformation times the absolute value of Jacobian. But then we do it component-wise, and then we back when we back solve for these, we obtained these. So um, that's X1, this one, and X2. So we put those here. But the density for X1 and X2 is just this, so it really it didn't matter. Um, but what then when we integrate out Y2, we have two regions. We, when Y1 is between these values and Y1 is between these values, then the boundaries are different. And so when we're between here, uh, Y2 went from alpha to Y1 minus alpha. And so then when you... Uh, integrate y2 you just get y2 and then evaluated these boundaries so it's this minus that and they cancel so um oh this minus a minus this and then so you end up with y1 minus 2 alpha divided by the, our beta and then when we integrate over this region we end up with this and this right here is exactly what we got two videos ago using what I call the CDF technique. If we uh, evaluate the density, it looks like this. This first piece is a, a function that does this, and this second value is a function that does this. But over their respective ranges, they're this, and that integrates to one. Well, that's all I have for today. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like it and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.